Hi, my name is Bob Glasby. I'm the technical advisor for the Mosquito Pathfinder Trust. Uh, here we are at the De Hamland Aircraft Museum, and behind me we have Mosquito number one W4050, the prototype. What I will do is we'll take you a walk around the aircraft, explaining some of the unique features of this particular aeroplane, um, and hopefully increase your knowledge. The Mosquito prototype was originally fitted with Merlin 21 single stage uh, supercharged engine. Um, but it was primarily, it was used in development of other engines and also very much so in the development of different exhaust configurations, which is one of the reasons that the cowlings on this were at, left most of the time painted with red lead as they were in constant change. So that's why there's colour. It went on to be fitted with Merlin 61, two stage, two speed supercharged engines. And as you see it here, it's fitted with Merlin 77s. Again, two-speed, two-stage engines, which greatly increased its performance and altitude handling. One feature we have here on the Mosquito prototype is this large repair patch on the side of the aircraft. Um, that was caused in May 1941 when the prototype was at, on trials at Boscombe Down. And on a heavy landing, the fu fuselage split from bulkhead four up there right the way down through the fuselage here. Uh, and round through to the underside of the aircraft. A team from Salisbury Hall here went down to Boscombe Down and chalked this shape on the aircraft and two pieces of ply were cut. This one and one on the inside of the aircraft. They were glued and then screwed onto the existing airframe and fabriced over. And that was the repair. It, it actually impressed the Air Force in the fact that had it been a metal aircraft, it would have probably been the write-off. But it still flew its whole lifetime and still has it on there today, this repair patch. The only major problem with the aerodynamics of the aircraft when it was first built and flown was um, the issue with the in the cell. On the original build, the flap was a single piece flap with a short cell that ended here and part of the flap folded down into that nacelle. The issue was that airflow over that nacelle was causing disturbed airflow over the tail plane, which caused severe bucketing at speed. So they went, uh, took the aircraft eventually to, not the aircraft, but a nacelle to the wind tunnel at Farnborough and developed several trial pieces of nacelle to try to reduce that bucketing. The result was what you see here. You can see this area of the cell has been extended right back, and the bottom area here has been deepened. So we've got a deeper nacelle with an extension. If you look inside the flat house, flat jack house out here, you can't see it on the aircraft, but the original short cell is still inside this nacelle. The prototype was also used for the development of wing-mounted munitions. Uh, again, two 250-pound bombs, and we still have in the fabric in here the area where the pylons were fitted to carry this wing mount. So that would increase the bomb load of the aircraft by 50%. The Mosquito prototype also exhibited a wingtip that was about a foot shorter than the production units. And if you take a look at the wingtip here, you'll notice that there are no nav lights installed in it. In fact, the Mosquito had no lights installed. There were no nav lights in the wingtips, no landing lights and no uh, tail or nose lights. The reason being that all its test flights were carried out in daytime and they didn't need them for that purpose. A series of trials were carried out using these slats on landings at Boston Down and other sites and it was decided at the end that the complexity of the installation uh, against the increased handling, they, they weren't worth the effort and this is the only aircraft to have them fitted. One of the key design aspects of the Mosquito or requirements was that they used the minimum strategic materials in this design to keep the cost down and also to uh, use uh, resources that were currently not being used for the war effort. And if you take a perfect example, is the undercarriage leg here, whereas on most aircraft at the time used an oleo pneumatic system, the Mosquito undercarriage leg, the ram, is just full of solid rubber blocks. It's a simple uh, 
damping system. And whereas undercarriage doors on the normal aircraft would use a hydraulic ram to close the doors with the Mosquito, as the undercarriage came up, it pulled these cables behind it over the rollers, and that pulled the door shut behind it. And same with the undercarriage dropped. These ram bars here just barged the doors open, and the undercarriage came down with no hydraulic or pneumatic requirements. Another issue they found on the prototype up during the trials at Boscombe Down was that the tail wheel originally was a standard circular profile tail wheel and was subject to severe shimmying on landing, especially on the rough airfield at Boscombe. Uh, so de Havilland developed this twin gully tail wheel to alleviate that problem. And you, if you look at a vampire or a venom nose wheel today, it's exactly the same wheel as you see here. As part of the development of the Mosquito, the Air Ministry uh, put a requirement in to fit a gun turret to, for the fighter variant, uh, and they used the prototype to trial a dummy gun turret uh, just behind the cockpit. If you look on the cockpit glazing there, you might just see a fine line coming down, which is where the fairing for the gun turret was meshed into that perspex, and it's marked the perspex. Uh, during the restoration, we found that mark. We also found all the fittings inside the aircraft where this gun turret was installed. Uh, it had such an impact on the speed of the aircraft, from getting about 25 miles per hour off the speed, and also at high speed, they found it almost impossible to turn the turrets due to the airflow, and so the project was abandoned.